Glory in the name of our Lord, my dear brethren. Today, we will deal with a very serious and always topical issue. Our topic today has the title, The Rapture of the Church Before the Great Tribulation. With God's grace, we will try to prove from the Word of God that the Church will not be here at the time of the Great Tribulation. We will start with the grace of the Lord from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 36. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Here, the key word is, and I will say it in Greek, ekphiin, which is referred in the ancient Greek text, and that's where the essence of the message is. In ancient Greek, the word ekphiin means live from there. I'm escaping from all that's about to happen, which means events will occur, but the church will not be part in all of that. And elsewhere, namely in the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and uh, verse 10, the Word of God says, Before you has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Here, the key word in the ancient Greek text is the word ek from temptation. It doesn't mean that I will keep you at the time of temptation, but that I will keep you from the hour of temptation. And elsewhere, namely in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24 and verses 37 to 42, I read from the Bible, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken and the other left. What's therefore? For you know not what hour your Lord does come. Here we see that the environment just before the rapture is characterized by insouciance. They all have the possibility to deal with their living affairs unhindered. There is no persecution. Instead, just before the second coming, the environment is completely different. It is an environment of grief and suffering. Let's see how the Word of God describes it in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 29 to 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, 
and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. From the above mentioned gives the following conclusion. After the tribulation, it is very clear that rapture does not follow but the second coming. The raptures precede, precede the day of the great tribulation for reasons already explained. But I think that it is very important to go on the fourth chapter book of Revelation and specifically of verse 4. I read from inside. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their hats crown of gold. This specific verse we read is very clear that the rapture has already happened for two basic reasons. First, we see the 24 elders sitting on thrones around God's throne. Therefore, they are in heaven and not on earth. The only have, the only one that have the authority to sit on a throne is the church, and this happens when resurrection occurs, when rapture will occur, because the Lord said to him who overcomes, I will grant to see with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. Christ sat in the throne of the father when he was resurrected. That's exactly how the church will sit in the throne of the father when resurrected and not before. Furthermore, the only that has the right to wear a golden crown is the church. And that happens when the Lord comes with the rapture because Apostle Paul said, Now there is led up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me, but also to all those who love his appearing. Here we must clarify the following. The 24 elders sitting in the thrones are the church representatives, which is resurrected and raptured. It is not possible for someone to claim that the 24 elders were resurrected, but not the church, because the church is raptured as a body whole, and not partially. Here, we see that for the first time after resurrection and the assumption of Christ in heaven, and specifically sitting on thrones around the throne of the Father, are men, and they are resurrected. If they were not resurrected, they would not be there. And also, we must clarify that our claim that the 24 elders are people of the church and that they belong in the New Testament, it is not arbitrary. It is their own confession, and they say in the book of uh, Revelation, and they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God, but by your blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and you made us kings and priests to our God, and we will reign over the earth. 
This confession is the evidence that the 24 elders are from the New Testament and they belong to the Church of Christ, which he bought with his own blood. Summarizing, we must say this in Revelation chapter 4, we see 24 elders in heaven. These elders belong in the New Testament because they confess that they are redeemed by the blood of Christ. It is the first time after the resurrection and assumption of Jesus Christ that men are found in heaven and they are in heaven sitting on the thrones. Around the throne of the Father proves that they were resurrected, that they were raptured. When all these are happening in heaven, we are at the fourth chapter book of Revelation, and the Great Tribulation has not started. The Great Tribulation starts in Revelation chapter 6, and I saw a book on the right of him sitting on the throne, written inside and not, and on the back sealed with seven seals. Where we see the four horses and the seven seals, later we will see the bottles and the wells. But, my dear brethren, in the Word of God, there are many arguments that show that the church will not be on earth during the Great Tribulation. I will not stop here. Let us go to Revelation chapter 7 and verses 1, 3. 1 to 3. 7 chapter Revelations and verse 1 to 3. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant the servants of our God in their foreheads. This brings up the following clear conclusion at the time of the great tribulation, the angels seal the servants of God. While during the period of grace which will stand, the seal is the Holy Spirit and it's the Lord that seals, not the angels. As it is written, by he confirming us and anointing us with you in Christ is God. And he has sealed us, having given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Therefore, it is obvious that church is not here during the Great Tribulation. And furthermore, at this point we have to add the following in every period the Lord add the seal in the Old Testament. The seal was the point of circumcision as it is written about Abraham as he received a sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith while still uncircumcised so that he might be the father of all those believing through uncircumcision for the righteousness to be imputed to them also. In the New Testament, the seal is the baptism with the Holy Spirit to all that seek and to all those who obey as it is written, in whom also you hearing the word of truth 
the gospel of our salvation, in whom also believing you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. At the time of the great tribulation, the Lord continues to have sealed servants, but that's not his church. But the 144,000 Israelis. Let us read very carefully Revelation 7th chapter and verse 3. 7th chapter and verse 3. Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. What does it mean until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads? It means that here on earth there are no sealed servants. But isn't the church sealed with the Holy Spirit? Of course, of course it is. But the church is not here on earth. The church is raptured. Also, the sealed servants in Revelation are only 144,000 Israelis from the 12 tribes of Israel. This shows that the church is already raptured because it is not possible for the church to be here on earth and angel to call only 144,000 Israelis as servants. Summarizing, dear brethren, all that we have said, we conclude to the following safe conclusion. At the time of the Great Tribulation, the only sealed servants are the 144,000 Israelis. The church is absent. Furthermore, during the Great Tribulation, the angel seals the servants. While, on the other hand, only the Lord seals the church. We thank the Lord for his word. Let us also see additional evidence revealing that the church is absent from the earth during the period of the Great Tribulation. Let us go with the grace of the Lord to Revelation chapter 11, chapter 11, chapter 11, and uh, specifically verses 3 to 6. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. There are the two olive trees and the two candlestick standing before the God of the earth. And may, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed." From the above-mentioned verses, it clearly concludes that the Lord does not work with the church, but with the two prophets. It would be inconceivable for the church to be here and not use its ministries. The church here is not seen anywhere, and also the way that the prophets operate is the way of the Old Testament. It has nothing to do with the New Testament, both prophets operate the same as Elijah. Fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. On the other hand, the church does not work like that. On the contrary, the church forgives and prays for the enemy. Dear brethren, if the church was here at the time of the great tribulation, then God would not consider the 144,000 Israelis as the only sealed servants, ignoring the church. 
He would not only use the two prophets in a way of the Old Testament superseding the church. The period of the Great Tribulation is the period of a new economy that looks like with the Old Testament. And this is another reason that the church will not be on earth. One more reason for church not to be on earth during the time of the Great Tribulation is the fact that it is not possible for the forthcoming wrath of God that will come to this world to fall onto his church. The Lord would already have taken the church near him and at the end of the seven year period will return with the church and for one thousand years will reign together on earth. Glory be in the name of the Lord. Amen.